Well, hello, hello to everyone. Didn't expect you all to be here so early. Was hoping I would get more time to prepare myself for a yearly Astra's game for me to review. A game I was kinda looking forward to it since it is a follow up to Slap Them All. Really like that one, even with its flaws. The thing is, this game was announced out of nowhere with almost no promotion, and the game is here out of the wazoo. Made by a company we have never heard of it before, and a publisher I wished I never heard of it before. Bringing out a card deck builder game for your single player adventure. Going to list this off my bucket list for Astrid's games I would like to see. Am I not the only one who has made his own ideal list for their favorite hero in different game genres? Must be only me then, oh well. Let's just focus on the main game that we have right about here and see if this game is any fun to play or was there a reason why they didn't do any commercials about it. Welcome welcome all to a new game review of Adstrats and Oblix Heroes. Where to begin with this game? No really, where do I even begin? I'm used to talk first about the story of the game, why we are following our comic heroes. Sure, we start all out with the same intro, an intro that in the year 50 BC, Julius Caesar has taken all over Europe except for a small village from the Gauls, where our heroes lived. Thanks to the magic potion that was made by Cadefix that can make everyone super strong and fast if you drink it. Sadly, Cadefix is gone for the time being for their yearly meeting with the other druids far away into the deep woods. So we don't have any magic potions to drink and it just so happens that the Roman soldiers are going to attack the village once again. So it's up to Astrid, Obelix, Edefix and the wife of the smith to beat down the Romans once again and see what they are planning this time for this adventure. Where we soon figure out that the reason why the Romans were on the move is because Julius Caesar is hunting down a lost treasure map that was from Theodatus. Who is that you may ask? God of the tribe from the Geld people? Or a roller coaster that we can visit in the Astrid theme park? You can pick which one it is. This is how the adventure begins where as we go further into the story, we meet other people in the village and friends we meet in our comic adventure who want to join us for this trash hunt that is from Theotitus. A simple fetch quest to find the pieces where the treasure may be hiding, mostly fill apart to stretch out the story to get more playtime in. Because sure, we need to fight some random animals like boars, wolves, Bears in this adventure, yeah yeah. Filler can be used well if you put your mind at it and fill out the characters. Sadly, all we get are the same jokes and every character talks only the same couple of lines over and over again for the main development. Yes Obelix, we get it, you're always hungry and think it everything is too literally. We get it Smith and the fisherman, you are always barking at one each other. And it goes for everyone while we're looking for a simple model of them who is talking in a simple background every time there is a story bit. Chiply made models that you have made notice look a little bit clunky. Will it be the attack motions or pulling their hands up into the air for an effect card? Oh, we get to the reason why it's all looking chip and clunky made. But now let's focus on the gameplay of it. This adventure is all about building your own deck for your heroes, the main core. So let's do this step for step, alright? Deck building to start out. Very simple and it will keep it that way. Hands down, an easy deck building adventure where we have 5 types of cards to make a deck out of 30 cards for 3 hero types in the front line, plus 20 cards for a deck for your support that is the back line. Attack cards marked in red, defense card marked in blue, heal cards in green, support cards in purple, and negative cards in grey that only the enemy can pull against you. Where even the heroes are classed in four types. Astrid, for example, is marked as an attack hero, Obelix as a defense hero, Edifix as a healer, and the wife of the smith is considered a support class. 
where next to the stats, stars and levels that you gain while playing as them over and over time, they have one special move they can pick between every fight, so even every hero you play can be played differently. Just make sure before you pick any hero or card that you read the right card description right. The cards, how wonderful they look, based on the comic moments we have read during the comic adventures, they are simple to read, but be careful, it can work against you to making your own deck. If you have a deck mostly out of defense cards, and then pick a card that can only be activated if you only have attack cards in your hand, is it going to work well on you? Once you build your own deck, try to remember which deck number it is, because for some reason we cannot rename those decks, so better remember which deck it was that you built. Ah, don't be afraid, since the amount of cards that you will get may be very small in the beginning. But over time, when we defeat more enemies, open chests, or go to the shop in the main menu, we can find up to 150 cards to use for this adventure. Once it is all set, it's time to begin with the gameplay part of it. Really, where we are dropped into a map and we have to pick a route to get to the other side of the map to fight against the boss with your deck that you have made. You can only go forward unless there's a dead end, so you have to pick your route carefully. Paths are blocked with obstacles that you can proceed if you are ready for it. Enemy encounters, signs, progress bars, chests and camps for you all to explore. And no, you cannot just take the long route to get it all since there's also a happy meter bar. And if that goes below the 60% mark or lower, then you will do less in anything. Less damage, less shielding, less healing. But if you make all the way the happy bar to 120% or higher, you get the opposite effect. More damage, more shielding, more healing. If you bring the right hero for the right level, then you can, if you want, break obstacles with a progress bar with the right icon. Succeed, you get some motivation back and you get access to the past. But if you fail, it costs motivation. So better try it out beforehand because then there is the campfire for you to use. You can pick between healing your HP or motivation to restore a little bit of yourself. Okay, okay, there's also that we can eat to use some items, but we can only get those items if you are going to fight some enemies. It can be buff cards, it can be experience bonus cards for the next couple of fights. It can be in chest that we can be looting around in this area as we are going to do the gameplay section. Or the shop, and we're going to talk about the shop later. Oh, trust me. As last we have fights against some enemies, and there are not only Roman this time around. There are wild boars, wolves, bears, a viking and other goals that we need to fight all mixed in between for you for their own strengths and weaknesses. The main, main core of this gameplay. Pretty plays it for itself, simple as a deck building adventure game. That's all what the game has in store and if you like this idea, then this beginner deck building game may be for you. To play as your favorite comic heroes, then this is for you. Where every hero from your childhood that is not only Astrid and Oblix is here playable for you. Sadly, that's all the praise that I can say because... Hmm, boy, where do I begin to complain about it? Okay, for all the complaints that I have say about now, that this is without a script, this is just with my personal feelings, and I just want to be honest with you all. Why this game had no commercials, why nobody heard of it, why this pricing of the game is very strange, no matter which console we are talking about. Okay, here we go. Starting out with the gameplay. It's very slow, it's very sluggish, and if you want to do anything fast, you have to wait for a couple of seconds till it's finally your turn. Sure, it's only by a couple of seconds, but the doors build up and build up and before you know it, you're only going to wait for the next turn that is your turn. And if you did shield up an other hero before it's their turn, all their shield will be gone when it's their turn. Okay, enemies do that as well, so you can take advantage of it, but if you know that the next hero is coming up that needs to be protected and after that is an enemy that is going to attack them, twice, because Oh boy, later on they will hit hard, and this is only from chapter 2 and onward, then you really need to be lucky that you have trained those characters up, 
find multiple cards of them as heroes because you can only upgrade them if you find more than 10 copies you get a 3 star version of it 5 to begin out 3 for 10 and up and up all the way till our 5 stars where they become the best and have the best unique abilities so you need to replay a lot of chapters look for every star to collect look for every secret that needs to be the right character with the right level to begin with because if it's the wrong character or you have bring the right character but it's the low level you don't get the reward from it so you have to replay that chapter over again sure this game is all about replayability and that's fine by me you just take it your own pace from it but i just don't understand why it is so sluggish why it is so simple why everything is against you even with the shop where everything is so expensive and you get so little money for every combat encounter so what's the reason for it Ah yeah, that explains a lot. So for the people that don't know, I did some digging about this game, why no one knows about it, why everything looks so sluggish, why the menu looks so bad, like it, it's made of a phone game, and that's because it is. This made game, Odd and Oplex Heroes by Game x is well known for the only games that they've made on the mobile phone market, where the first one was a Facebook-like game, like Farmville in those aspects, only then with abstract characters, with Oblix and Romans and yada yada yada. The second game where this asset is coming from, and it's like a cookie clicker, only then with abstract and Oblix characters. I never played it because I don't like mobile phone games that are just so boring. At least I know I play my gacha games. I play. I know I play my phone games, but at least it's built to be stylish, it's built to be good, it's built to be fun in so many regards. But everything we have seen, everything the game is going to use against you. It's all with a phone in mind. And then we come to the publisher of the game, Nekon. I don't want to be sounding mean. I do mean, I do respect them all in their own way, shape or form. But if a publisher team is well known for selling their own handheld controllers with their own brand and for the games they are going to publish are going to be small games that don't have the best reputation in most of the game. They do have some good ones, but if they are the one that also did publish Golem, then you know this game, Astrid Heroes. Is just here for the marketing sell point, just to sell a few copies of the brand. And after all that, all the complaints that I have with the game, why nobody has heard of it, why I think nobody wants to play for it, I still kind of like it. Yeah, I still kind of like it in short burst, okay? If I have two hours of free time without any work, without any other games, and I'm just sitting in bed before going to sleep, I don't mind to put up this game and give it a run or two, just to see if there's any fun. Hence why this is not a really 100% review on it, I didn't beat the game, I am still doing this at my own pace, and that is the best recommendation if you want to play this game. Just do it at your own time, don't play it fully all the way, rush it down, get to the end and then say why you hate the game because then why did you even play the game to begin with? It's only because it's with outside characters, sure I like my outside, it's my favorite comic hero for my childhood, but even though I have my limits and do I regret that I played this game? No, not really, but from the all the people that are willing to try this out, be careful. Wait till it is on sale. Will it be from $40 from the Nintendo Store, $30 from the Xbox or the PS4 Store, or $20 on Steam for some reason? Really, the pricing is so odd. Just wait till all of them are on sale for the right price for you and try it out for yourself if you really really like Astrid's or you really really like Astrid's and want to get into a deck building game that this can be for you hello hello the everyone welcome to the end credits of the video 
Thank you so much for watching this video once again of my Astrid and Obelix review. Next time I hope there will be a better game from now on, but I know it will be. When that will be made in the review, I don't know, because at the moment as we speak I am in a different place, so for the people that are wondering why my voice sounds different for this video, then that's the reason for it. I hope for everyone to have a wonderful day ahead of them. Leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content of my Will It Be Of Asteroids and Oblux reviews or anything else that I like to do in my own free time. Take care everyone, until next time. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.